The cavernous sinus is divided into small caves via septa. So this is septa and these are the caves. So hence the name cavernous. Now this is a paired dural venous sinus. What is dural sinus? Dural venous sinus. Dural venous sinus is basically two layers of dura which has channels in between. Channel between two layers of dura. So here we are talking about the meningeal layer and the endosteal layer. And so there's small channels. Let's write. Yes. Small channels between the meningeal and the endosteal layer of dura mater. So what happens? What does this do? What is the purpose of these channels? They help in drainage, venous drainage from the brain, from the orbit and skull. So I mentioned that it was paired, right? So I drew two or uh, two cavernous sinus, one on this side and one on the other side. Now where is it located? These are located on either side of the cella tersica of the sphenoid bone, sphenoid bone. So we are looking at the middle cranial fossa here. So the meningeal layer starts with the letter M. So let's draw an M here. Yes, M is ready. And the endosteal layer, let's take another color so we don't, there's no confusion. Endosteal layer will be here the floor that is an e right endosteal starts with an e so we are writing an e like this you'll have to look at it sideways uh, to see the actual e all right so you see this right here so since we are we said that this is in the sphenoid bone we can draw the sphenoid sinus right here these are the two sphenoidal spinous so i did mention that Cavernous sinus is on either side of the cella tersica. So this pink right here is the cella tersica. And what does cella tersica mean? Yes, Turkish saddle. And what does it hold? Yes, it holds the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland right here. So if this is the roof and this is the lateral wall and this is the floor, what do we see here? We see that the floor is made of the endosteal layer of dura mater. The roof and the lateral wall is made of the meningeal layer of dura mater. So we got that much covered, right? Boundaries, we got that much covered. So let's look at the middle cranial fossa. So this blue area is a frontal bone. This right here is the ethmoid, a small one. Sphenoid, the bat shaped is the yellow, sphenoid. Yes, this brownish red is temporal, parietal green, and this orange is occipital. So you guys know all this. Now, why am I showing you this is to show the anterior boundary as well as the posterior boundary. So cavernous sinus, let's say it's somewhere here. The anterior boundary is this right here. This is, what is it? Please tell me. Yes superior orbital fissure so that is anteriorly superior orbital fissure posteriorly what is seen so this is the temporal bone what i am outlining right now is the temporal bone now this has a squamous part this is a squamous part but what we are looking at is the petrous part petrous part of temporal bone and that is this right here this part right here is the petrous part. So this is the posterior boundary. So posterior boundary is petrous part of temporal bone. So we just covered the lateral, the roof, the floor, anterior and the petrous or the posterior part. Now we're going to look at the contents, the contents of the cavernous sinus. So like we did before, we're just going to draw the M first, meningeal layer, and E. Next is E, right? So E will be something like this, a sideways looking E. Yes, we can draw the sinus, the sphenoidal sinus here. Yes, and what else? Yes, we can draw the pituitary gland here. Cella tersica is enclosing it. We can draw the caves and the septa. Yes, and what else? What else could we draw? So, see, 
so now um, so now we have to look at what is there on the lateral part now the contents this is the lateral and this is the medial so to remember the contents there is a mnemonic called O Tom Cat. Now this is not something I made up. This mnemonic has been there from a long time. Uh, usually I share my own mnemonics but this one is something that's been there among medical students since many years. So O Tom Cat, how do we write this? We write it like this, okay. Look carefully. I'll take a different color, okay. O T O M. So this will be on the lateral wall and next to the T we write C and A, cat. So O, Tom, cat. So C and A is on the medial side. O, Tom is on the sides, on the lateral walls. Okay. Now we need to see what this O, Tom, cat stands for. So O, Tom, cat stands for O stands for oculomotor oculomotor which is the cranial nerve number three t for trochlear number four cranial nerve number four o for ophthalmic trigeminal nerves first branch that is five one maxillary m for maxillary trigeminal nerves two v2 52 so these are on the lateral side now what does ca stand for a for abducens which is a sixth cranial nerve and c for you should remember carotid internal carotid artery so this is what o tom cat is all about this mnemonic has been there for many years and it's amazing because there's always a question uh, on which mm, structure is present on the medial side and which st structure is present on the lateral side. You shouldn't get confused. CNA is on the medial side and O Tom is on the lateral side. So it's like saying, Oh, Tom Cat. It's like Tom Cat did some something, you know, something bad, and we are just uh, the owner of the cat is saying, Oh, Tom Cat, I'm so fed up with you, something like that. So just keep this in mind for the contents of cavernous sinus so there's something called as cavernous sinus thrombosis that you should know about it's thrombosis thrombosis means clot so this is referring to the formation of a clot within the cavernous sinus all right so the most common cause of this cavernous sinus thrombosis is infection and it usually spreads from outside the brain outside the brain means it could be from the orbit that is near the eye paranasal sinus again nearing to the eye or the danger area of the face you know where the danger area of the face is right so these are the locations where, where typically uh, infection spreads from that area to the cavernous sinus. Now, what you what you might wonder, like, how do they reach the cavernous sinus? See, there is an anastomosis between the facial vein that I've drawn here and the superior ophthalmic vein. So it's very easy when um, the dangerous area or the dangerous zone of face is infected, then the infection can easily spread through these channels to um, facial vein and to the super, super, superficial ophthalmic, um, superior ophthalmic vein and reach the cavernous sinus and that is called the cavernous sinus thrombosis and you know what if the infection is really high and um, things can go wrong then it can also lead to meningitis this is even more scary so the cavernous sinus receives drainage from one ophthalmic vein second is the central vein of retina third is a sphenoparietal sinus fourth superficial middle cerebral vein and fifth is the pterygoid plexus one very interesting point that i want to tell you about is cavernous sinus is the only site where an artery in this case it's the internal carotid artery passes through a venous structure yes we not we don't see that anywhere else now why is this it's because this is thought to allow for heat exchange between the warm arterial blood and the cooler venous circulation. This is just something interesting that I thought you should know. It's good for your general knowledge. So this is all about cavernous sinus. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to my channel. Bye.